I'm Mike Strauss, and I'm the CEO of Good Life Innovations and iLink Technologies. So today, I'm going to give a very brief show and tell about our privacy protocols. You know, anytime you talk about technology, and certainly iLink technology, you know, privacy is a focal point, and it's important to discuss it. I would tell you our vision of privacy is more as possible by technology. With technology, it's much more possible. Uh, uh, you're much more able to to protect and, and and sort of craft a privacy protocol in a way that you can't do with humans. And so I'm going to go through some of the the, the things that we do, and, and really the. The first, it's multifaceted, and the first approach is about software. iLink Assist is the software, and it combined with our technology allows us to filter out unnecessary needs for support and pinpoint time when support's needed. In this way, we are less intrusive because we can decide when there's a need and when there isn't a need, and that's, that's individually configurable in our system. For example, iLink Assist combined with technology sensors and other kinds of, of, of technology in a home can tell you when uh, a lot of things are happening or not happening in the home. That's important. For example, it can tell you if somebody's up at night. Uh, it can also tell you if you have staff and you expect that there's motion or that they're moving and they're not, which may mean that they may be sleeping. So it can detect that possibility as well. Uh, it, it can tell you if somebody went to the bathroom uh, just by sensors and did not return to their bed at night, for example, uh, or has been in the bathroom too long at any time. So that would let you worry that maybe somebody needs help, right? Uh, it tell you, for example, if somebody eloped or left the home inappropriately, or the inverse of that is somebody entered the home at the wrong time. Uh, we are getting that ability to tell you if somebody enters a bedroom or exits a bedroom. And so that's something that we will soon be able to tell you with, with our technology. Outside intrusions, uh, unintended presence. So, for example, if, if, if the home is supposed to be empty through the day but, but it detects movement, that would be a concern. It could mean that somebody was left there or inadvertently there with no one knowing it. So that would be important. Or, or that somebody is too close to something. Maybe they're too close to where you keep sharps or, or restricted things uh, and you want to know that, but you don't need to know their movement until that occurs. Maybe they're too, um, the staff uh, uh, have not done a bedroom check. So we even have technology that will show us that somebody is doing something on the schedule. So if a staff person is to check, you know, a bedroom three times a night, we have a technology stamp that allows us to know whether they did that. And if they don't do that on schedule, instead of later, we know immediately they didn't do it on time and we can actually help them. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, and also the, the technique actually looks on the health of itself. It tells you if the system is operating well and working as it should, if the batteries are all there and in place and, and everything's functioning, cameras are functioning, everything's working. Um, so when it detects these things, it also has very configurable ways to let people know. It can let the person who lives there know uh, by audio uh, 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 a file that's played over the intercom. It could send a text to a support staff or it can alert an iCoach to check in through the intercom to make sure people are okay. So technology filters everything out that doesn't need to be attended to and it pinpoints the times when you need to give this the support. And that's what it's all about. And that's how you improve privacy in uh, even greater than what you could ever do with the presence of, of staff, which you can't filter any of that out, of course, with the presence of staff. The other things that's important is technology has the ability, for example, motion detection and cameras have even additional capabilities for our cameras are very, uh, very um, high tech cameras that allow us to digitally take out views that we don't want the camera to see. So if there's a doorway or an area of the home that they want to be private, then we can mask that out so that that camera actually doesn't even detect that area. So if we wanted to see over here, but not over there, or we didn't want them to see that table or that, that area, we could certainly do that with, with our 
uh, cameras. Same thing is true for motion detectors and then just how it's arranged and installed. All those are ways to architect what you actually filter in and can see or what you can't see or what motion we, you will detect or not detect. So technology has so many configurabilities and of course our system you know, has done that for years and years and years. Uh, and so you then you get into the next part of privacy, which I am I'm actually most proud of, and that's our self-direction and empowerment components of technology. And that's so important because we want to make it very simple for people to direct help uh, so that people, you know, people can get help when they need it. And people, even people who haven't got a lot of skills, they can press a button, right? And so that's kind of how we look at things is we want to be the biggest empowerment thing is not even speech, it's pressing the button. And as an example of that, you know, we have the ability to turn cameras on and off. You'll see here that when the camera's on, we have indicator lights, right? Like this one that shows, oh, that camera's on. So it's really important that the person see that, right? And so we can have cameras or, or lights and we can have even lamps that are on when the camera's on to make it a real clear, you know, indicator that, that they're being helped or virtually staffed at that moment. But they also have the ability, if, if, if they're allowed, to self-direct, turning the cameras on and off. You can see the cameras are on because it's a big yellow uh, uh, lights on, but if you turn the cameras off, immediately the light goes out. And you'll notice over here that green light here is out as well. So that means the cameras are stopped and you can see that the, everything froze and in just a second that will go to disconnect so that you won't see anything. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on now. And so you can self-direct again by pressing this on. But you can also see that the light's on. And I'll tell you one other thing. If that's too complicated, you can also press the intercom and say, hey, would you turn the lights, or would you turn the camera on, or would you turn it off? And it can be done remotely as well. So we make it super simple to, to self-direct and control your environment so people really are empowered to get help when they want, but not the intrusion of, of, of unnecessary help and to remove it when they don't want it and when, when they want to be in private. In this way, it's, it's more private. And so uh, I'll also tell you that one of the features that's coming is you'll see the, a screen where, where basically we'll be able to see who's helping us. And that's coming soon, but, but it's, it, it's not here yet. And it's something we're working on. And then here's the intercom. And again, it's a simple intercom you press. And it could be in different locations. Hi, Chris. This is Chris. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? We're great. Would you do me a favor? Uh, I would like to show them how we virtually knock to come into home. Would you mind hanging up and giving me a call? Sure. All right. No thanks, problem. Chris. Bye. Chris is Eileen's wonderful eye coach who's been here about 25 years. Chris is going to call back and show us how they virtually knock, as she just did. Hi, Link. This is Chris. Hey, Chris. Thanks for knocking. Uh, I just wanted to uh, show how that worked in, in our system. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So, again, you know, a simple way to connect them and a simple way to, for somebody to come in, but it's respectful uh, to let us know they're coming in, and we thought a knock was the best way to do that. Actually, that's configurable and we can do different kinds of, of, of notifications on how to let people know that we are, you know, uh, coming in and, and to help them. So this is an example of self-direction and we can use other kinds of things to even make home automation simpler. We can use, you know, buttons and, and what we call uh, NFC tags or their their uh, cards that we tap with our phone, simple, again, it's just a simple tap, that will do a home automation that would be too complicated for somebody to do with software. But if you make it simple, where you just press a button for a home automation, or you hit tap your phone to a card that says, you know, good night, and when that, you tap it, it makes sure that iLink's notified, you know, that, that we're, we're there to watch. Uh, and help at night. Uh, that's a kind of home automation we like to do because it's simple and easy for the person to do. And that just takes you to either, uh, it'll take you to text or audio or video immediately. So you can have information about people's, you know, allergies. So it, it just allows people to have information that they need. Emergency numbers, 
uh, what the weather is today. It could be anything that you want as long as you are able to put on a card. And again, the idea behind this is to make something simple for somebody. They pick up a card that has a picture with it, what the information they need, like a picture system. They hold it up and it takes them and gives them either a, a video or audio or text that they, that they need. Another part of self-direction that's really important is our pendant. Our pendant is a very important one and it basically is a device that works wherever you are. It does not require to be connected to your phone, which a lot of them do, or connected to Wi-Fi and remain in the home. This is totally mobile and requires nothing other than the pendant and, and it works. And this pendant basically connects you to Good Life's call center where we basically can geolocate you wherever you are and get you help that you need and which could just be calling you know your eye coach to 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 come pick you up or, or it could be you know uh, or it could be uh, calling you know 911 and giving them the location that you're at so it's a super simple system it actually can uh, be charged for more than a few days and if it's ever low on charge actually it warns you and I, I, I don't also think I I mentioned that, that actually you speak directly through it and others speak to you. If you don't mind, I, it goes to our call center, but I think I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it. I'm pressing it and I hold it until it vibrates and you can see that it turns blue. And in a minute, it's going to start calling the call center. No, I actually, I'm just demonstrating this technology uh, for some people, and I just wanted to give a call to show how it works. I'm perfectly healthy and perfectly fine, and I really appreciate that. Okay, just real quick, is this Mike Strauss? It is. And everything is all right, Mike? I just want to be sure. Everything's perfectly fine, and thank you. Thank you. Bye now. So you can see this and you can see, you know, and again, you know, this kind of technology does take a little time to get there and back, but it's also geolocating your location. And this is able to be connected to 911 or to other parties so that you can get the help that you need and they know where you are. It's really an important thing that's that used in combination with all of our other technology. People can use this in the home or out of the home or through the community, wherever they are. And it's just a, an amazing little device and, and, and works perfectly. So what we've tried to do is go over, you know, examples of ways that, that we can, you know, build up people's self, you know, self-determination skills and their empowerment skills to get help and control their environment and how we can have them be a partner in, our, in, in how technology works. But at the same time, We've also talked about how technology can be architect and individualized so that it notices the things it needs to notice and doesn't, uh, and filters out things it doesn't need to see. And through all that process, we really have, you know, we've advanced privacy by eliminating intrusions that are otherwise unnecessary. And we really made it so that we've implemented a system that's, that's something that's superior to what actually humans who are present couldn't do. I mean, humans, you can not tell them what to look at and what not to do or what, when to be present and when to be, they're, they're either there or they're gone and they're looking at everything or not. They're, they're, you know, they may be, you know, consuming or watching TV or involved in stuff. So, you know, obviously the idea of intrusion kind of in ending is, an in, you know, an invasion of privacy is considered to be an unwelcome intrusion. So the thing that's really important is that is that we want our help to be welcomed and we want it to be controlled and empowered and so that and one real important thing is that the people who help have to be people who the person knows well and that's just as important as anything else and i always give the example if you're sitting at, at, at a dinner table and a salesman calls well that's an unwelcome intrusion but if your grandma calls then, then that's not. Same technology is who is doing the intrusion and whether it's welcome or not. And that's why iLink 
is an infrastructure that we provide to agencies so that the people at the agency who, we, who has iLink technology can have people who know the men and women that they support well, whether that's you know people who go out and support but also are eye coaches and help people. They know them well and they're well trusted and they have a familiarity. And that is as important as all of the technology and all the logic and all the filters is that it's used by people who have a relationship with the person that's being helped. So that's a little bit about uh, iLink technology and how we approach privacy and self-direction.